Today, I'm going to try to beat a hardcore Nuzlocke of Pokemon Platinum playing as Gym Leader Lieutenant Surge, using his best possible team from his actual appearances in the main series games. For this run, we're going to get one new random encounter per every badge that we obtain, with Surge's team looking like this. But we'll be allowed his two best alternates as well to make it a reasonable challenge. He's got a really cool roster, but the frailty of it and common weaknesses are concerning me quite a bit. If you like this idea and want to see more trainers, make sure to smash that like button and let me know what trainer you want to see next. Let's see if we can beat Pokemon Platinum as Lieutenant Surge with only one new encounter per badge obtained, no items in battle, level caps in place, and the battle mode on set at all times. Today's video is sponsored by BetterHelp, whose mission means a lot to me personally. You see, back in my early days of university, I had a rough go of things and was diagnosed with panic disorder, with daily debilitating panic attacks. The thing is, I didn't really understand what I was going through at the time and thought something was wrong with me that I couldn't dare tell anybody else about. I waited a long time trying to tough it out by myself before finally having the courage to talk to an in-person counselor at the school's health center, as online therapy wasn't in the mainstream back then. Fortunately, I now haven't had a single panic attack since 2015, and I attribute that fact in large part to the skills that I learned in therapy, and the opportunity to talk to somebody candidly and judgment-free about what it was I was going through, without having to feel like a burden like I would have if I talked to those close to me about how much I was suffering. But an online therapy service like BetterHelp is exactly what I wish I had back in the day, and you can access it with ease by clicking the link in the description below. BetterHelp connects you with a licensed therapist who is trained to listen and give you helpful, unbiased advice. You can have your therapy sessions as a phone call, as a video chat, or even via messaging if you prefer that. Whatever's most comfortable. It's the easiest possible way to start talking to a therapist. After a few questions to assess your needs, you'll usually get matched with a therapist within 48 hours. If you think you might benefit from therapy, join over 4 million other people and consider BetterHelp. Let BetterHelp connect you with a therapist who can support you, all from the comfort of your own home. Visit BetterHelp.com Sylph or choose Sylph Spectre during sign-up and enjoy a special discount on your first month. All right, here we go. Time to take on Platinum as Lieutenant Surge. Man, knowing the lore about Professor Rowan, sometimes you've got to think, just who is this guy? He was the mentor of Champion Cynthia, top Professor Oak, and Professor Sycamore. This guy is the granddaddy of profs. Daddy, chill. Well, it's time to pick our starter Pokemon, and a randomly selected starter ends up being, arguably, Lieutenant Surge's best Pokemon. At least when it fully evolves, his Magnemite. I'll definitely take that. But before we check its nature, it's time for a battle with the War, aka Barry. Now, I had no idea how tedious this battle was gonna be, but as it turns out, Magnemite only starts with Tackle, and Barry keeps spamming Withdraw over and over again to raise his defense. It took over two and a half minutes to complete this one one-on-one -on -one battle with Turtwig taking us below half even though we resisted tackle. Insanity, but I'm glad we can move on. As it turns out, our trusty Magnemite has a bashful neutral nature, not adding or taking away from any of our stats, and he has Magnet Pull to trap steel types on the field. Less useful in-game than in competitive battles, but I'll take it. And I'll also forcibly take the return TM from Rowan, as that might be handy for a later encounter of ours. Arriving in Jubilife City shortly thereafter, we run into none other than Looker, the international police member. You you know, if you had told me back in 2009 that three generations later, Looker would return with a Hoenn Battle Frontier member on his team to take down interdimensional monsters that are tearing through the fabric of space-time, I probably would have looked at you really strange. In order to get our Poketch, we have to talk to three people who don't like Generation 5. Easier said than done, let me tell you. Now, fortunately, there is a way for us to get special attack EVs, the only one as far as I can tell, as we can go north to Route 204, where there are Badu, and I try to take out as many as I can. Before making it to the next city, we have another rival battle with the War on Route 203. Thankfully, Magnemite had learned Thundershock before the battle, so his newly caught Starly was fried in one attack. But then comes in his stupid Turtwig again. It does resist Thundershock, but still, with Magnemite's way higher special attack and stab, it is our best option. And it also has the chance to paralyze. Eventually, I realize it's probably best to start using Metal Sound to lower his special defense, as often using a stat-lowering move against the early AI causes them to use stat-boosting moves in return, as he does spam Withdraw, this time not being a threat to us. Eventually, we can take him down in two attacks, and I've gotta say that went way smoother than last time thanks to our new move. Making our way through the gate, we arrive in Orberg City, where the first gym is. And before anything, I pick up a dusk ball from a girl in one of the hotels, just to spite the people that claim I'm hacking by having one before the first gym. Oh hey look, it's those people incarnate as a Pokemon. Duck. 
Hello, hard worker. Uh, excuse me, what? Something tells me that term would be offensive in a country or two. Ooh, impressive power, my good sir. Now do the one behind you. And in a clutch moment, right at the level cap of 14 while I was training up, Magnemite learns Sonic Boom, which might just be the key to making this run possible with it as a starter. Why, you might ask? Well, let's hit up the Orberg Gym to answer that question, facing the gym leader Rourke, a rock-type specialist. He leads with a Geodude, which fortunately doesn't have any ground moves, or else we'd be toast immediately. You see, Sonic Boom is guaranteed to do exactly 20 HP damage, which gives us our only way to hit rock and or ground types without immunity or resistance. Rock Throw is resisted thanks to our Steel Typing, so we can hit him twice for the KO. In comes Onyx next, another part ground type, but its attack is lower than Geodude's even, so another two Sonic Booms do the job with us at two-thirds health. In comes his final Pokemon though, Kranidos, which smashes us hard with Headbutt, even though it's resisted, and it's looking like it's going to require three hits to take him down. He did 7 HP with his first attack, so this is going to be close. If we flinch from headbutt, this attempt ends. He hits us again to 8 HP, and no flinch, and then we hit him, and BAM! A clutch critical hit to finish him and win the battle. Okay, I mean headbutt chances to flinch are pretty low to begin with, so I'm pretty sure we had that, but it was nice not having to risk all of our hard work so far. For winning our first badge, we have our very first reward encounter egg, and after running around a bit, it hatches to give us a Chin Chow. Huh. Now that would have been very helpful before the rock type gym. Chin Chow has a lax plus defense and minus special defense nature, not bad overall. A quick trek up north has us arrive in Floroma Town, where we can get our first held item of the game, Orin Berries, always incredibly helpful in Nuzlocke's. Okay, so I struggled to get the door open to the Valley Windworks, then the grunt inside goes nuts that I found a way in. My dude, you were standing right there, couldn't you have just held the door, or better yet, held the lock? He just watched me open it for 10 seconds and then was surprised when I got in. It's time for our battle with Team Galactic Commander Mars. Always a really tough one, but this time, I'm feeling pretty confident. You see, she leads with a Zubat, which we have one of the few things that can outspeed it this early in game with a super effective Thundershock to end it. Then comes the big gal, Perugly. It uses Fake Out to flinch us right away, but we do resist her stab moves as a scratch then doesn't do much. However, Thundershock does a bit less than I had hoped. We then tank Faint Attack with ease, and our next attack tips her below half, but her berry helps her. The same goes on our end after the scratch, though. Then we land another, and a crit again. This Magnemite is clutch! We don't even get brought to half before another one takes her down. I was just hoping for Paralysis to be honest, but a crit works too. Not too often you can do that battle with one Pokemon and live above half. Wow. Hey, uh, who's the new guy? It must be really funny for players who didn't play the post game. They make this big fuss about a new higher up in Team Galactic who's platinum exclusive, then he has like no role until the game's effectively over. Reaching Eterna Forest, we're greeted by a familiar face, Cheryl, who's more of a powerful trainer than you might expect. We see that in the battleground in the post game. Getting her to the forest exit safely, she thanks us with the Soothe Bell item, which should come in handy in helping to evolve a later encounter of ours. With that, we arrive in Eterna City, where I immediately get the Explorer kit from this old man. Boy. I wish he'd explore my ki Okay, you know what? Too far. Too far. But yeah, the underground's gonna be pivotal for a certain item that we're gonna need soon. Entering the Eterna Gym, it turns out with things like Leech Seed and Mega Drain Recovery all going off, even the trainers are much harder than I anticipated given that Magnemite has Grass Resistance. Yikes. After tons of theory crafting, it's time for the second gym leader, Gardenia who has three Pokemon, whereas we basically have one since Chin Chow is weak to her entire team. I'm not feeling too great about this, but I lead with Magnemite against her Turtwig. I know that she often uses Reflect first, so I go for Sonic Boom, and she does indeed. I hit again, and she goes for a Sunny Day. Okay, better than Razor Leaf, as we can outspeed and land a third and final one for the KO. And knowing we'd need it, I had Magnemite at high level 22, which is allowed in Hardcore Nuzlocke, so we level up as Cherim comes in. Now my biggest fear here is Leech Seed, which would end our hopes and dreams instantly. She uses Safeguard, which actually destroys the plan I had with Thunder Wave. Oh no. Sonic Boom does a third before she gets a crit on Magical Leaf. No way! We hit another to bring her low, then she hits us again to below half before our berry as we can take her down with another. My whole plan here was to paralyze Roserade and pull off the switch, but now, with that crit and safeguard, I don't know about that. 
that. She goes for Stun Spore and misses it, so we get a Sonic Boom off. Then Magical Leaf brings us to 5 HP as we get another off to bring her low, but her Citrus Berry heals her and gets her out of range of another. I really have no choice here, so I have to stay in and let Magnemite get taken down. Ouch. We could have had that without the crit. Now I send in an unevolved water type against a fully evolved Roserade. As Chin Chow gets hit with Magical Leaf and survives on 6 HP as I thought should happen as now I go for Confuse Ray. I wanted to use Flail hoping Magnemite would have brought her in range but my calcs tell me it won't work from here. I just need her to hit herself in Confusion just once and she does opening up an opportunity for Flail, a move that boosts in power the more the user is hurt, to KO and finish the job. Oh man, left to a 50-50 chance in the end, and we lost a Pokemon, but we made it through a battle that I thought might not be possible. Losing a future Magnezone is completely brutal, but we press on. Time to figure out what replaces our dear Magnemite as a new badge encounter hatches and ends up being an Eevee, which has a quirky neutral nature. Not bad, but there are two important things here. We have to evolve it before level 15 or it won't get an electric move for like ever. And we need to hit up the underground using the Explorer Kit to get his evolutionary item, the Thunderstone. It is incredibly rare to find before the National Dex, but a long search Nessus one which we can use to evolve him into a Jolteon. Quite a speedy and powerful Pokemon to have this early on. At the top of the Eterna Tower, we're challenged by Commander Jupiter, a battle that makes me especially nervous now that we don't have immunity and resistance from Magnemite against her ace. Regardless, I lead with our newly caught Jolteon against her Zubat, and we can fry it out of the air off the bat. In comes her ace though, a Skun Tank with 70 power, stab, high crit ratio, Night Slash. Uh oh. Thundershock does not much at all, then she goes for Screech to lower our defense. Uh, that is not good. I'm forced to switch as I get Chin Chow out, who gets hit by Night Slash for a third, but no crit. I know we can live another non-crit, so I stay in, and she just goes for Poison Gas as I get Thunder Wave off to paralyze. Even after poison damage, our Orin Berry keeps us in a safe non-crit range, so I utilize Chin Chow to the fullest by tagging her with a Confuse Ray too. And she hurts herself in confusion. Okay, we're still in this. I have to switch now, so I go back into Jolteon, and she hurts herself in confusion again as I do. Amazing. Then we get a miraculous crit to bring her below half before her berry, but she makes it through both paralysis and confusion to poison us. Better than Night Slash at least. We then hit her to the red as she snaps out of confusion, but stays paralyzed so we can outspeed and land the finishing blow on the next turn. Wow. Gotta say, we've had some decent luck apart from that Cherim crit on Magnemite, but I know that this won't last forever. <laughs> Looking back at the game at one point, I completely forgot Cynthia gave us an egg, and I was so confused, like, did I steal a reward encounter unknowingly? Is my subconscious acting against the rules of the game? Hitting up the Wayward Cave secret entrance under the bridge, we can plow through the bike maze to get one of the best TMs in the game, Earthquake, which a single one of our future encounters will be able to learn, ironically enough, for an electric team. <laughs> you know what, Don? That is exactly how I feel about our prospects for this run. Well put. After talking to our mom, who's stalking us in the Heart Home Contest Hall, we have a chat with Fantina, and every time I do, it unearths hidden trauma for me. In Canada, we have to learn and are tested like crazy on our French, so you can see why. Oh, and side note, it turns out the Volt Switch TM is available in Amity Square in BDSP, but not Platinum. That hurts big time, would be one of the best moves in the game for us. In the Heart Home Gym, I had a first time experience. The symbol that corresponds to the door was not only tucked right into the corner so it was impossible to see for so long, but it was right beside the corresponding door too. Crazy, never had that happen before. Alright, no more procrastinating. It's time for a gym leader who I think I fear more than any other we've faced so far, and that's saying a lot. Fantina, the ghost expert. After tons of special attack EV training, let's do this. She leads with a dust goal as I get Chin Chow out there. I go for Confuse Ray right away, realizing her ace has Magical Leaf, so this is Chin Chow's only opportunity to shine. She made it through for Future Sight, and then I paralyze her with Thunder Wave. She then snaps out of Confusion immediately and hits a 75% accuracy Will-O-Wisp. But fortunately, I planned ahead with a Rostberry to heal it. I just wasn't expecting to have to use it this early. Water Gun then does a quarter as she stays paralyzed, and we get hit with Future Sight. I then re-confuse her, which works out well as she hits herself one turn, stays paralyzed the next, and then we bring her to the red in two more hits, and she hits herself again to KO. 
Not fantastic though, as I was actually hoping that she waste her super potion there, as in comes her ace, Miss Megius, who I don't want her to be able to heal. I have to stay in and try to get Confuse Ray off. But she confuses us first, but we do make it through. Two confused Pokemon then go to war as she hits herself, and then we land the Thunder Wave. Oh, that was incredibly needed as she then stays paralyzed. Beautiful. I then switch into Jolteon, but she snaps out of confusion, but stays paralyzed. Okay, Thundershock then does like nothing as Shadow Ball hits us for a third. We then hit her to a third before her berry heals her, but then she makes it through again to confuse us. Oh, not good. Realizing Chin Chow still has good health and confusion will inevitably end Jolteon, I risk the switch. And she remains paralyzed so we can outspeed with Confuse Ray on the next turn thanks to Paralysis. And she hits herself in Confusion again to half. Water Gun then brings her to a quarter, but she makes it through to Confuse us again. Thought that was going to be a Magical Leaf to be honest, but I guess she doesn't have the KO range as I now switch Jolteon back in. But she snaps out of Confusion and hits a Magical Leaf below half before our berry. I then use Thundershock once more, but it barely doesn't KO in the red, which triggers her Super Potion. That is exactly why I wanted it to be wasted on Duskull. Two more attacks bring her to a third before Shadow Ball then hits through Paralysis to bring us low. I have no choice here, so I cross my fingers as we hit her to the red, but nope, she makes it through, KOing our beloved Jolteon with Shadow Ball. Ouch. From there though, Chin Chow can come in with the Water Gun KO at least, but she still has one Pokemon remaining. Haunter, which fortunately does miss Hypnosis as we confuse it. Then she makes it through and confuses us. Oh man, but we make it through to paralyze her. We then hit ourselves in confusion, but Haunter does the same. This is crazy. We then land Water Gun for a quarter, then she snaps out, but stays paralyzed. Holy! We then hit ourselves again. Not good. But she went for hypnosis and missed, then we snap out of confusion to bring her to the red, and she stays paralyzed twice in a row so we can land the final blow for the badge. Are you kidding me? Just a complete luck fest on both sides, I can't believe Chin Chow managed to pull through again. Just an all around clutch performer, but we did lose Jolteon, which is not good for our future prospects. Regardless, another reward encounter awaits, this time hatching to give us an Elekid. Cool. Although it does have a relaxed plus defense and minus speed nature, with the latter being terrible for a Pokemon that depends so much on speed. Knowing what's coming up, I make sure to level up Chin Chow and have him evolve into a Lantern who also learns Stockpile. Should help with our team's frailty a ton. Not only that, but I also bring Elekid close to the level cap at level 30 to have him evolve into an Electabuzz. If only he evolved by friendship like almost every other baby. I can at least attach the XP share on our HM Bidoof to help us with the cap. In the Route 209 gate stands the War, who has grown incredibly strong since our last battle, and I'm kinda nervous. He leads with a Staravia with Intimidate, but thankfully we have the perfect answer, as Electabuzz can outspeed and take it down with Shockwave, a move that cannot miss, so it even protects us against his usual double team shenanigans. Next comes Buizel of all things, and here I do something interesting. I don't go for the KO, but knowing it can't do much on us, I use Return twice to bring it low, and then switch into Lantern. Now, I can use Stockpile three times in a row to raise our defenses hugely with him not being able to do much. Then finish him off with a Water Gun thanks to Electabuzz's contributions. The big threat then comes in Grottle, which neither of our Pokemon fare well against, especially given that it has high crit chance Razor Leaf. For this reason, I merely keep Lantern in at max defenses to ensure I can get the Paralysis and Confusion off, the latter of which he does break out of quickly, but confusing him again, I can then switch into Electabuzz, who, with Grottle extremely crippled, can take it down safely with a few returns. From there, his last Pokemon is Ponyta, which gets downed in a single powerful shot wave to end the battle. Very happy that strat worked out. Route 215 ahead has a few great items for us like the fist plate item to boost fighting move power and the shockwave TM too. In no time we arrive in Veilstone City, the location of the next gym and where we can get incredible items and TMs in the game corner. Most notably the Thunderbolt TM. Let the game corner grind ensue. With some team prep done, although we hardly have a team at this point, it's time to take on the fourth gym leader, Maylene the Fighting Specialist. 
She leads with a Metatite and I get Electabuzz on the field. With a hyper-powered Stab Thunderbolt from a base 95 special attack Pokemon, that thing had no chance. Lucario, however, is a different matter, not only outspeeding us, but hitting us to near half with Drain Punch before I use super effective Low Kick to bring it below half. I know we should be able to survive another attack, so I stay in, and we do on 20 HP before our berry, then can land another to KO it. Her final Pokemon is then Machoke, whose attack power can be dangerous, but it merely hits a Rock Tomb to drop our speed, hits a Strength for a third, then a Thunderbolt from Lantern paralyzes so we outspeed again and can take it down for our fourth badge. Wicked. Finally, a reasonably manageable gym leader fight. Grabbing our next egg from the PC and not having a death to put back finally, hatching it gives us a Voltorb. Cool. Not the bulkiest mon out there, but definitely the fastest as it has a calm plus special defense and minus attack nature. Not bad at all. Training it up a bit, Voltorb then evolves into an Electrode, and since it's inevitably going to outspeed almost anything, even without EV investment, I'm going to go for HP and special attack instead. Moving down south... Oh, of course, the Magmarizer is available now, but the Electrizer is a bit later on. Can they please reverse that just this once? Ah, uh, the classic, oh, there's a blackout in the next city move from Game Freak. I swear we better get some sweet Lumio City blackout content in Legend ZA. Game of the year if that happens, 100%. Right before the next gym, the war challenges us to battle again, and this time I go for a different strategy. I Thunderbolt Staravia for the KO after it quick attacks us, and then I switch into Lantern. But Ponyta goes for Tail Whip, so not wanting to deal with that nonsense as I try to raise our defenses, I switch back into Electabuzz and fry it as well. When Grottle comes out, I merely Thunderbolt it four times to take it down, and it did manage to take us all the way down to 22 HP due to its Overgrow ability, as I barely didn't KO it on a sliver on our third. Close one. Then, his damn Buizel went for Pursuit on us as I switched out, fearing the Aqua Jet, with Electabuzz surviving on just 3 HP before Lantern could come in and clean things up. Sheesh, that was close. Right before the gym, I make sure to head south and pick up the Toxic TM, which I think will be super handy for what's to come. Speaking of which, it's time for the fifth gym leader, Wake the Water Trainer. Now on the face of it, he's a piece of cake, with his lead Gyarados of course going down immediately to a Thunderbolt. But in comes Quagsire, a part ground type, and at this point I realize... I forgot to teach Lantern Toxic before the battle. Oh god, why? We got our speed lowered by Mudshot on the switch, and I just go for Bubble Beam to do about a third before he Rock Tombs. It seems we're not in quite as much danger as I thought, but then he yawns as we bring him to the red, and then Hyper Potions as we hit him once more as we fall asleep. He then starts Water Pulsing out of nowhere and confuses us on the third one while we're asleep, and we wake up three turns later and hit him twice in a row after he yawned us again snapping out of confusion to take him out. In comes his final Pokemon, Floatzel, and I know we can tank even a crit of any attack he has, so we tank the crunch and land the one-hit KO Thunderbolt to win right before we would have fallen asleep. Definitely messier than I had anticipated, but we got the badge. You know, there's something poetic about the war goofing around while there's a bomb going off in the city. Oh, and now here he goes asking me if Cynthia's my sister. He's just deflecting. Look at his hair. Cynthia is his sister and Palmer is their dad. Confirmed. Having sorted that out, we can grab our next reward encounter, and this time it ends up being a Pichu, with a quirky neutral nature. Awesome. Perfect location too, as we can get it a massage in the house nearby to help with its eventual friendship evolution. A long journey brings us to Route 210, where we can find the Shadow Ball TM, great for a Jolteon, for instance. If I had one! In Celestic Town, we also reach the Glasses Dude, who gives us the black glasses right now, but will give us the choice specs at another time of the day. Can't wait for that. In the Celestic Ruins, we're challenged by Team Galactic Leader Cyrus for the first time, and boy do we have trouble for him. As Electabuzz is able to outspeed Sneasel with the 4 times damaged Low Kick KO, then the same happens to his Golbat and Murkrow with Thunderbolt. Damn, that works. After waiting until it learned Nasty Plot at level 18, I also have Pichu evolve into a trusty Pikachu. If only there was a light ball around here. But we know Surge, he likes his trusty Raichu, so naturally there's no reason not to use a Thunderstone and get exactly that. A speedy and powerful Raichu to add to our roster. Then, with Surf now in hand, we can get the best double item Wombo Combo that there is. Being able to pick up the Electrizer and Thunderbolt TM near the Valley Windworks. Unbelievable. With the 4 
Transformer, we can now trade Evolve Electabuzz to get a beastly Electivire, which I cannot wait to test out. Not only that, but heading back near Pistoria City, we can find the Colored Shard Move Tutor who can teach him both Fire Punch and Ice Punch. Wicked. Arriving in Canalave City, we have the second last berry battle in the game, and this time I lead with Raichu to take Intimidate from Staraptor and paralyze it with Thunder Wave. It double teams as I then switch into Electivire, who does get hit to half by takedown, but can freely Thunderbolt it from there. As Rapidash comes in, I then Thunderbolt it for the one-hit KO, then in comes Heracross. And it seems I made a miscalculation as Fire Punch doesn't quite KO in the red, then Brick Break slams us to just 7 HP in the red. Holy... I can then take it down with another though. And now for the key moment. His now part ground type fully evolved Torterra comes in, but our secret weapon Ice Punch annihilates it being four times super effective. Now knowing his Float Soul is inevitably going to Aqua Jet since we're within range, I switch in Lantern who can absorb two attacks to get the KO with Thunderbolt. One close call, but overall our team's doing much better given how much stronger the war was this time around. Picking up the U-turn south of the city and also the magnet to boost electric moves in Iron Island, it's time to take on the 6th gym leader Byron the Steel Trainer. Now, although we do have Earthquake on Electivire, I have to lead with Lantern and set up stockpiles against his Magneton, as Steelix has Earthquake, and this is the only option to play things really safely. His Magneton keeps using Metal Sound, so we get three off and then surf him twice for the KO. His Steelix then comes in, and bam, a stab, super effective, one-hit KO. His final Pokemon and Ace is Bastiodon, and surprisingly, it survives the first one and uses Taunt, but the second KOs and wins us the sixth badge. Oh wow, the Flash Cannon TM for winning. How good that would have been for a Magnazone. Well, in the Lake Valor Cavern, Electivire finally gets his chance to shine, obliterating Commander Saturn's Golbat with Thunderbolt, his Toxicroak with a massive power Earthquake, then even having Fire Punch to counter his Levitate Bronzor in two hits as well. What a champ. Against Commander Mars at Lake Verity, I then tried to have Electrode have his all-star debut, but in three charge beams to take down her Golbat and Bronzor, he never once got a special attack boost and got toxic. I knew he would be able to outspeed Perugly, so I thought he was a great choice, but no special attack boost means we would have been KO'd. So I sent in Electivire to handle the rest of Bronzor with Fire Punch, and then got Fake Out flinched and put to sleep by the damn cat, so I had to switch into Lantern to thankfully finish it off after it survived on a sliver, being brought to less than a third health in the process. Goodness gracious. For the Candelave badge, we now get a new reward, and hatching it gives us a Pachirisu. I'm not sure if I've used one of these before, and if I have, exceptionally rarely, as it has a timid plus speed and minus attack nature. Stellar. The basement of Mount Cornet has some great items for us, such as the soft sand to boost ground move power, the light clay to extend light screen and reflect duration, and the never melt ice to boost ice move power. Fantastic. The snowy routes of 216 and 217 were hellish as ever, but eventually we made it to Snow Point City where the next gym is. <laughs> All right, so uh, who's the next gym leader again? Candice D- No, no, we're not doing that. Dead meme, stop it. It's time for the seventh gym leader, Candice, who is a bit concerning for us, but I think I developed a good plan for her. She leads with a Sneasel, and I decide to go in with Pachirisu, making his debut. You see, I've trained him up to be quite a bit bulky. That way we can tank a faint attack well and land a charm to lower her attack by two. Doing that twice more is great for us, but we did get crit hard to the red before our berry before landing the third. Then land the sweet kiss to confuse her as well, then the U-turn to pivot out of there with super effective damage. Go Pachirisu, go! Now I get Lantern in, and I kinda panicked here knowing the stockpiles could be helpful, and getting Toxic off on Obama Snow would be great too, but between the potential Sneasel slash crit or the Obama Snow Woodhammer crit, I ultimately opt for my second strategy and take Sneasel out with Thunderbolt, then Piloswine out with a stab super effective Surf. In comes a huge threat, a bomb of snow, but I know switching into Electivire we can survive one and respond with the 4 times super effective Fire Punch for the instant one hit KO. Beautiful. Then in comes her final Pokemon, Frostlass, which, don't forget, has Snow Cloak activated to increase evasiveness in Hail. 
but I had a perfect plan here. Switch into Electrode, eat a blizzard up after our berry, set up the light screen to ensure that we tank two more, then go for Shockwave which can never miss, even factoring in Snowcloak. But BAM! She crits us after the light screen was already up. Are you kidding me? Well, I did give Electrode another chance, but he did not pull through for us. Now I have to send in Lantern and I am not taking any chances, landing the Toxic right away so we don't have any miss nonsense. And this was utterly insane as we kept missing, got tagged with a special defense drop from Shadow Ball, kept missing more, and in the end she ended up full restoring, healing her fully and getting the Toxic healed too. But then we landed a crit thunderbolt to bring her to the red, and I know we have nothing left to switch into safely against this thing, so I stay in, and we survive another one in the red, and thankfully land a final thunderbolt to end this damn battle. That was completely insane, all because of the least timely crit ever. Rest in peace, Electrode, but his sacrifice did allow us to get the badge by the slimmest of margins. Depositing our poor Electrode, we can then get our final encounter of the run, this time hatching the inevitable Electrike, who has a brave plus attack and minus speed nature. Complete trash, if not the worst possible one, but hey, we can use all we can get at this point with only a party of five remaining after the seventh gym. We can quickly evolve him into a powerful Manectric though, who I'm really hoping will be able to put in some good work for us. Oh my, this looks like a serious ordeal. Ahem. Attention, all Team Galactic employees. The bathroom on B2 is currently out of order. I repeat, the bathroom on B2 is currently out of order. Thank you. Making our way to the end of the Veilstone HQ, we arrive in the final room where Cyrus awaits. And this time, I have a special surprise for him. I lead with Manetric against his Weavile, this time with the choice specs attached. But bam, we get smashed by Ice Punch. Huh. My calcs told me we'd outspeed that, but the minus speed nature must be even worse than I thought, as Thunderbolt does KO at least. Too far in now though, as Crobat comes in and hits a Poison Fang, and we survive it on 31 HP and fry it as well. Finally, his Haunch Crow is something that we can outspeed for sure, annihilating it with a final Choice Specs boosted attack. Now that's what I like to see. Atop the Spear Pillar, we engage in a double battle with Mars and Jupiter with Barry on our side, and I lead with Electivire. Not only do we have super effective fire punch against them, but also knowing they'd set up reflect and light screen which can be damning, I taunt him the Brick Break TM so he could shatter both screens, making their whole rosters less of a threat. And we also now have super effective Brick Break on Perugly too, so in the end we're able to take down both Bronzors and Perugly with Electivire in the red. From there, it was a matter of getting Lantern out there to handle Bronzor and their two Golbats with Rapidash's help, although in the process we got poisoned and confused, leading us to have less than half health by the time Skuntank came in. But Barry's Rapidash got a crit on Fire Blast upon switching in Pachirisu, but Poison Jab then got a crit on us. Just to play it safe, I switched in Raichu as Barry thankfully hit his Fire Blast, but it somehow survives on a sliver and hits Raichu with Poison Jab. But he barely survives and can land the Surefire Thunderbolt to guarantee the victory. Sheesh. Brick Break definitely saved us there. After the complete legendary madness that ensues, we'll never get over the fact that six legendaries are here simultaneously at this moment. We then get sucked into the distortion world where at the end Cyrus awaits us for one last battle. And for this, my plan required EV training Raichu to the absolute max, and leading with him against Houndoom. I go for Nasty Plot off the bat to give us a plus two special attack boost as he lands the burn on us, then Thunderbolt is powerful enough to KO. From there, I knew Gyarados would come in since it has Earthquake, and Thunderbolt completely devastates it. Then, in comes the hard part. I'm praying my calcs are correct and we can outspeed Weavile. And we do, taking it down with a hyper-powered attack. Amazing. Honchcrow was of course no match for Raichu's supreme power, and to play it safe and not risk a speed tie on Crobat this late into the battle for no real reason, I swapped to Lantern just to be safe and guarantee the victory, although admittedly that poison and confusion double combo did have me nervous towards the end. Without Raichu, that would have been a tough one. Oh look, Giratina! Hey man, can you maybe, uh, like, shut down your reality? It's kind of messing with ours. Ah, you know, Raichu, I am so proud of you. Operating as your own lone wolf and killing your debut with no troublemaking- I- Oh, what the hell did you do?
It's time for the 8th and final gym leader, Volkner, and I've gotta be honest, it was a matter of attaching the soft sand item to Electivire and going ham with Earthquake, being able to one-hit KO everything until his Luxray, only getting quick attacked by Jolteon in the process, and somehow his Luxray survived one in the red, but could only manage a crunch before two more after he healed, sealed the deal, and won us our 8th badge. Let's go! Aw, oh, it's too bad we don't have an Ampharos to greet Jasmine with. Lieutenant Surge does have one, but it's not part of his top roster we have going on. With that, we make the perilous journey through our penultimate test, Victory Road. And the long path leads us to our final destination, the Sinnoh Region Pokemon League. And just before entering these hallowed halls, we're challenged by Barry for one last battle, which is making me a bit nervous, but this time I have a secret weapon or two. Against Staraptor, I lead with Pachirisu to take Intimidate, then go for Charm to drop its attack. Serves you right. Close combat hardly does anything on us now, and merely weakens his defenses, so now I can switch an Electivire to tank another and respawn with the easy Thunderbolt KO. As planned, in comes his Torterra next, and I can smash it with a 4 times damage Ice Punch for the one-hit KO. Then comes Snorlax, a big threat, but with Brick Break we can do over half, and then he goes for Earthquake, which would normally end us, but I had attached a Shuka Berry to weaken ground power. We survive on half, and can land another attack to take it down as well. Then comes Heracross and I know we cannot stay in, so I go into Pachirisu to tank close combat again, which does do huge damage to bring us to a third. But our Citrus Berry then activates, and I know we can land a charm before he attacks again, so the next one can't quite KO us either. Not wanting to risk a crit, I now switch into Lantern, knowing his defenses are super low. As we tank another with ease, in addition to a Night Slash on the following turn, then destroy him with a single Surf. His final two Pokemon are Floatzel and Rapidash, and Lantern is too much of a defensive beast to be threatened by them, especially with the leftovers we got using Pickup, so a Thunderbolt and Surf Oko each of them respectively. Good job, team. It's time for the final challenge, the League itself. The first Elite Four member is Aaron, the Bug-type expert, and quite honestly, we have an almost guaranteed win strategy here, as teaching Flamethrower to Manectric and attaching the choice specs on him allows us to outspeed and one-hit KO his Ian Mega, Heracross, Vespaquin, and Scizor before his final Pokemon, Drapion, then comes out. There's no way I'm going to deny Manectric the clean sweep, so I attack again for about half after his berry, and he doesn't have Earthquake so we can tank Cross Poison, paralyze him with Static, and land another for for the victory. Manectric, you certainly proved me wrong about you. I think you came to see how great bug Pokemon can be. Uh, well, you certainly did not show me that, my good sir. The second Elite Four member is a complete nightmare on the face of it, Bertha, the ground-type expert. Great for our electric team, huh? After theory crafting for a while, I think I've come up with what might be our only shot. She leads with a Whiskash, and I leveled up Lantern right to the cap, with the Choice Specs attached, and put the XP share on Pachirisu so we don't overlevel. Surf does 3 quarters on Whiskash, then Stab Super Effective Earth Power does over a third on us before we can take it down with another. But then, in comes Hapowdon. I thought she'd send in Gliscor. Not good, as this starts the Sandstorm earlier than I was expecting, but at least we can get the one-hit KO on it. From there, she sends in Golem, followed by Rhyperior, both of which are four times weak to our attacks and go down with ease. However, after all that Sandstorm damage, in comes Gliscor, and we're not in range of surviving an Earthquake from it as I had hoped due to Sandstorm. This is not good, as what the hell do we send into a stab super effective 100 power move on our whole team from a base 95 attack Pokemon? Well, I know we can't lose Lantern, and Electivire only has a 60% chance of surviving a switch in, so I go into Pachirisu instead, and Earthquake does three quarters on us. With a Citrus Berry, we could have used Charm here and likely survived, but with the XP share on, our only hope is to land the Sweet Kiss and hope she hits herself. But nope, another Earthquake ravages our little mouse and ends him for good. Rest peacefully, my sweet prince. From there, at least, we have the quad effective Ice Punch outspeed in our pocket from Electivire to win us the battle. And going on a vengeance spree, I attached the Expert Belt you can get from Route 221 south of Sandgem Town, which is accessible early, you just can't use the Pal Park there until the post game. With it, I can have Electivire unleash with his raw speed and power, earthquaking each and every one of Flint's Pokemon to death, even his historical rival, Meg Mortar. What a beautiful performance! The last Elite Four member is Lucian, the Psychic-type trainer, and one of the ones I'm more scared of if I'm honest, as he's got a couple Pokemon that we have no clear answer to. He leads with Mr. Mime, and I go in with Electivire. 
The main threat here is him setting up light screen or reflect, which would end us, so I taught him the taunt TM from the Eternal Galactic building so he can no longer use them. I next execute my plan by going into Raichu and using Nasty Plot. We just can't get crit here, but Psychic seems to do just over half. That must have been an incredibly lucky range though, as there's no option but to trust my calcs and tank Psychic on 6 HP and can unleash with a plus 2 magnet boosted Thunderbolt to take Mr. Mime down, and even Bronzong too, which is tricky with Levitate. But then, he sends in Gallade, which I thought he always reserved for last, as I seem to recall him doing that no matter what in past battles. Oh no. I have no choice here though, I have to attack since he even has Leaf Blade for Lantern. But nope, he survives low and lands a Drain Punch on us to KO Raichu, but Static does paralyze him. Now that's just petty. Electivire can then come in and Thunder Punch him into Oblivion at least. But two Pokemon remain, including his Alakazam, which hits us with a Psychic to below half and gets the special defense drop, before Thunder Punch doesn't even KO in the red. Why? Knowing he's gonna heal, I switch into Lantern, but the problem is, he even has Energy Ball, which does big damage. Then we land a Surf to the red as well, and he hits us again to the red before another one does the job. However, he has one Pokemon remaining, Espeon, and I have no choice. I go into Manectric hoping he'll use a random move, and he does Shadow Ball, which we survive on just half. Then land a Thunderbolt, but no paralysis, so another takes Manectric down. Ouch. From there though, we can land the final blow with Electivire's Thunder Punch, barely scraping by the battle. That one hurt. And with just two Pokemon remaining, it's time for the final challenge, the champion of the Sinnoh region, Cynthia. Uh, yeah, I don't know how I'm feeling about this, but I use all of our remaining rare candies and go for it. She leads with her incredibly tough Spiritomb, and I get Lantern out there. Now my plan here was to Toxic stall it with Protect every other turn, but after landing it, she then gets a crit with Shadow Ball and the special defense drop combo. No way that just happened on the most important battle of all. Our one way of making this feasible destroyed instantly. Needless to say, I'm forced to proceed with my plan, and eventually, having been so flustered by everything going wrong, I made the wrong call on her healing turn, and only ended up doing less than half damage before Lantern got taken down. Well, Electifier, it's all up to you now. But we barely don't KO in the red from Thunder Punch. Man, oh man. As we tank a Shadow Ball and land another to finally get rid of that damn thing. In comes Garchomp next, an electric team or Pokemon's worst nightmare. But my calcs pull through as we outspeed it with the four times super effective Expert Belt Boosted Ice Punch KO. Let's go. Then in comes Lucario, and we can do the same to it using Earthquake. No way. Then comes Togekiss, and if you'll notice, before the league, I retaught Electivate via Thunder Punch, and that's for a particular reason, as Togekiss gets down by it. But then in comes Milotic, which would normally survive Thunderbolt well due to its high special defense, but its physical defense is much lower, as we tag it with a stab super effective 75 power move on a base 123 attack Pokemon, and it does enough. No way! Is this really happening? Her final Pokemon is then Roserade, which we outspeed and land the Ice Punch on for the KO and the ultimate victory. I can't believe we pulled through that. What a run as Lieutenant Surge has emerged victorious over the Sinnoh region with just one Pokemon remaining. An absolute blast of a challenge, incredibly hard moments all throughout, and that shows in our remaining party. Thank you so much for joining me on this adventure, and I'll see you guys next time for another challenge video.